What do you want to learn, baby, today? Well, I understand baby Yoda's language. What he's saying is he wants to learn TF serving and fast API today. And he wants to go through some ML ops concepts. In first two videos, we trained a model, we exported it on a disk. In this video, we will be writing a fast API server around that model and we'll have a working HTTP server ready, which we'll use to, for the deployment in the production. And this is how the big companies do the deployment. So you will learn a lot of practical, useful tips today. So make sure you watch till the end. Couple of prerequisites for this video. You need to know about Fast API. I made a very simple Fast API tutorial that even a high school student can understand it easily. So you need to watch that. The second prerequisite is, I made a simple video on TF serving, like what's the purpose of TF serving, how it is useful in ML ops. You need to watch that as well. And obviously this is part three of this project series. So I'm assuming you have watched the part one and part two. So let's get started. In our last video, we exported models to a models directory, which is this particular directory. And I'm going to rename it to saved model because that I feel is an appropriate name. And I'm going to create an API folder here. And in this API folder, we are going to write our fast API based server. Now let's install some prerequisites, some modules uh, to write this API server. So if you go to my GitHub page on potato disease classification, go to API directory and requirement.txt file. You can either git clone it or you can right click here create requirements.txt and once you have that file i will just copy paste this here so requirement.txt is used to list down all your python dependencies and then you can go to command prompt here go to api directory api directory i see the requirements.txt file see actually i need to save it so i have saved this now and it, it has all these requirements and i can simply run pip install hyphen r requirements.txt and it will install all these modules you can install them in the, uh, individually but this approach is a little better so now all our modules are installed i'm into pycharm here in api folder i will go right click create a file called main.py and here first thing i'll do is i'll go in a zen mode i will start meditating now and from fast api import if you've seen my fast api tutorial these are like this is like bare bone that you need so here you will create an app which will be an instance of fast api and let's write a very simple you know ping type of routine so you will say async def ping okay and you, you can just return hello i am alive i'm writing this routine just to make sure that my server is alive you know we can call this ping method and make sure our server is alive it's not crashed or it is not stopped and here you can say app.get and this is how you specify an endpoint and I will say ping. You can say hello, hi, whatever. So this is bare bone fast API ping server ready. So let's test this now. To run this server, you can use uicon command based on my fast api tutorial you can say main because that's the name of the file right main.py so you'll say main colon app which is this variable here app and reload you can run it this way but i'm going to run it in a little different way and that way is this i will import uicon as a module and you can say if your standard python way you know if name is equal to main uicon dot run and here you will specify your app your port let's say port is let's say 
8000 you know and your host your host is let's say local host and i can right click run it okay or oh, this there is a syntax error so i can run it the server is ready to run and now i can go to my browser and type in localhost 8000 ping when i ping see i get this hello i am alive which means my server is ready you can also look at docs and that will give you all the documentation so i have ping method you can say try it out execute and that is another way of testing your server see i just got this response hello i am alive so my basic bare bone is set up now i'm going to write my actual predict method so let me just copy paste here and instead of get this will be a post routine because you're not like reading a record and trying to get something you are doing model prediction and probably post is an appropriate method for that you will call this entry point predict and this one also predict by the way these two functions these two can be different you know i can do like predict foo as well they don't have to be same really now what will be the argument of this okay let's think about that so this will be a file sent by your mobile application or website it will be an image of a potato plant leaf and that image since fast api provides inbuilt validation if you use an upload file as a data type and let's do some google search on what upload file really is so if you do fast api upload file you find this documentation and you can read through it but the idea is when you use uh, something like this the fast api will make sure that whoever is calling this predict method they have to send the image or the, the file as an input if you send let's say an integer or a string as an input it's not going to work so i'm just going to copy paste this thing here usually in python you have syntax seen syntax like this you just give a variable name but when you do colon it is type hint it is this is a data type basically you are saying upload file is my data type and when you say equal to this it means this is your default value okay so now right click run it i will show you what happens okay file is not defined because i need to import file and upload file here and i can run it so now this is running it is ready uh, let me just stop it here actually i will put a breakpoint at each stage and i'll show you in the debugger how it looks so this is how you put a breakpoint right click debug and i will go to okay what i will do is now local host see my documentation shows this and i can use uh, this web ui to post the actual request now see fast api is telling that my input has to be a file so you need to choose a file here so this is one way of testing your api the other better way which i like is using postman so go to google and just say download postman you find this website download the app based on what os you have and once you have that app installed you can go here and run postman okay i have this postman running here and i'm going to use a post method so here select post and type in http localhost predict okay so localhost because it's running on 8000 and i'm calling a predict method and it is expecting file as a as a parameter so here i will go to body and i will say form data because we are sending a form data when ui sends a data it will send a form data here and this will be file 
this is file because this is also file if this is let's say xyz then this will also be xyz you get the point right so that's why this is file this is file and here you select the file so i am putting let's say late blight image here okay and when you say send since i have uh, this server running in debugger mode it has now stopped here and you can see the data type of file see file in the variable pan here it says it's an upload file beautiful so fast api is good in this sense if you were writing a flask server you'll have to do a lot of manual validation so fast api is much better okay now i have this upload file i need to convert it to a numpy array or a tensor so that my model can do prediction so my next step naturally is going to be how do i convert this file into numpy array well first what i need to do is let me just stop this here i need to do file read i need to read the files you know because that way i get my bytes back okay as simple as that and you can read the documentation of this on fast api now this is an async routine so i will call await the benefit of doing await is that if 100 callers are calling your server let's say you have one server running and there are 100 mobile applications you know 100 farmers are using your mobile application they all are sending predict requests and they are attaching a huge file now let's say to read the file it takes two seconds if i don't have async here let's say and if i don't have await here what's going to happen is my first request let's say it takes two seconds to read my other request will be waiting but if i do await and async while my first request takes two seconds to read the file it will put this function in a suspend suspend mode and my second request can be served you can go to youtube and watch some tutorials on async io so you will get an understanding of why we are using async and await so i, have, I will put a breakpoint here again I, I i always run it in debug mode and once i run it in debug mode i go to postman send it here and you see bytes I love breakpoints and debugging because that way I can evolve my program step by step. So now I have all the content of the file read as bytes and I need to convert these bytes into numpy array. Let me write a simple function called read file as image and that returns me basically image is nothing but a numpy array. Here this will be a regular python function which takes data which is basically bytes as an input and it returns np.nd array as an output okay now here i need to import numpy as np and then i will also import a couple of things so this data that that's coming in uh, is bytes and you can use bytes io python module let me import that python module here and when you do bytes io like this you can supply this thing to pil directory so pil sorry pi mod module pillow module is a module that is used to read images in python and from pillow module i have imported image class and when you do this image dot open it will open uh, it will read those bytes as an image as a pillow image and to convert pillow image into numpy array you can just say np array like this and that will be your numpy array which you can return as an image and that's it so now let's put a breakpoint again so i put a breakpoint here again clicking on my bug icon and again sending a request so now let's see what do i have in image hooray party 
NDR8, 256 by 256, that's my X and Y of image, and 3 is for RGB. Each of these values are between 0 to 255 range. So my NDR is ready. Now I need to load my saved TensorFlow model. So to say load my TensorFlow model, first I need to import uh, TensorFlow and then I will create a global variable, you know, let's call it model and tf dot keras dot models dot load model. So that will load the model. Now let's give a directory path of this model. If you look at my directory structure, I'm here, okay, in API, I have to go to a parent directory, then go to saved model, and I will load any model. These three models are same. In practical situation, you might have different versions of model with, you know, different accuracy or, you know, they will have different metadata, but I will use this one model. So to go to parent directory, you see, you will have to do dot dot, then you will do saved models, then you will do one. I'm just, you know, using version one. We will also look into using a TensorFlow serving by which we can dynamically load version one, two, and so on. But right now I'm just keeping things simple. I'm also going to create a variable now called class names, which will have all these three class names. Now these three need to be consistent with what you had in your notebook when you were training the model. Now here I will do model.predict image. But this image, it doesn't accept a single image. It has to be a batch image and you can, basically I have, see, I have this image, okay? 256 by 256 by three. This predict function doesn't take single image as an input. It takes multiple images. So it has to be like this, okay? And the way you can do that is by doing uh, NP, dot expand dims and you can give image and zero so if you read the documentation of this thing say np expand dims what it is doing it's a simple api friends nothing confusing see you have one dimensional array when you do expand dims it is just adding one more dimension that's it it's making it two dimensional array and if the axis is one it will add that dimension at a column level so read the documentation is super duper easy API. So I will call this an image batch. And that image batch goes to predict as an input. And what you get as a return is predictions. Okay, I'll stop here and I'll again run it and see what happens. So I clicked on debug icon here. Now model is loading, so it will take some time. So have some patience. And you need to see a prompt here, which will say UVCon running on this. Then only you can run your postman, you send it. And now see, this is also taking time because prediction is a little bit time consuming. See, my predictions are one by three. So it's an array because my batch has only one image. So the second dimension is my actual prediction. And if you look at this prediction, you know, the second one is, see, it has three values. Let me just show you. Yeah, you see it has three value, 1.29 e raised to minus nine. So this is very, very small number, 0, 0.00 something. 9.99, so this is almost 0 0.99. And this is, again, you see e raised to minus zero six. So I have three classes. So the first number corresponds to early blight. Second number corresponds to late blight. Third one is healthy. So it looks like this is late blight because the second number is a uh, highest value. So you, what you have to do here is you have to always take, so I will call this predictions. And in this prediction, you need to take zero prediction because it's a batch and in batch you have given only one image so take zero prediction and the class the class name okay class name 
would be whoever is the maximum value. So what np.argmax will do is this. See, I had three values, correct? I had 0, 0.00 something, then I had 0 0.99 something, and I had 0. Point again, 0, 0 something. So when you do np.argmax, it will look for maximum value. Maximum value is this. What is the index of this? Index is 1. See, this is 0, 1, 2. So the index is 1, so it will return 1. If my value here is, let's say, something like this, then it will return 2. Okay, so that's my np.argmax function. And this index, when you give it to this particular array, it will tell you the actual class name. Okay, so here I will say predicted class is equal to whatever is this index and class name. You just give it as an index to this. Then the confidence will be the np.max. So prediction zero. Okay, so np.max again, I'll just show you. If you have value like this, you know, then what is the maximum value? 0 0.99. So this function returns 0 0.99. It is as simple as that. And that I will store in a variable called confidence. And you can just uh, return these two in a simple dictionary. So let's run this and see what happens. So I'm going to run this and whenever it's ready, postman, send it, see late blight. Now you can easily taste, see this is late blight. Okay, let's taste healthy. Healthy leaf, send, it says healthy with 98% uh, confidence. So you can try different images you know, like early blight, for example, early blight, let's say this one, early blight, see, the score, the confidence is very high and my model is perfect, perfectly predicting the accurate class for each of these images. Now, loading the model from one specific saved version might work okay for demo applications, but in real life, in big corporate companies, you have new versions of these models being built all the time. And let's say version number one is a production model, it is stable, but then you come up with version number two, which is beta model, which you, you want to try it out on your beta users. So now you're running kind of a B testing scenario where you're comparing the performance of version one with version two and you want to dynamically route the traffic to some traffic, let's say 10% traffic to beta users and remaining traffic to your production users. Now you can do all of that in this code. You can just maybe call it like a prod model and you can call, let's say version two, a beta model and dynamically you use one or the other based on the user type. But there is a better way to handle this situation and that better way is using TF serving. If you go to YouTube Code Basics TF serving, you'll find my video. I highly recommend you watch it because I'm not going to cover all the concepts behind TF serving, but just to give you a gist of it, you can have in your UI code or client code, you can have this type of URLs or endpoints for your TF serving, you can say prod URL is labels. You know, you can use labels. You don't need to use specific version. You can say my TF serving endpoint label is prod versus beta. And the corresponding config file might look this like this. This is prod actually, okay? This is production versus prod, but this is prod and this should be prod. So that prod is pointing to specific version and things get dynamically loaded, version management becomes very, very easy. If you want to, let's say, build a new version, let's say version three, and point that to beta, all you need to do is just change this config file. You don't need to change a code. When you change a code, you have to do a lot of testing. It might break things, it's risky. But if you change config file, 
it's little safer again i friends you have to watch this video to get an understanding of tf serving now we are going to change our architecture a little bit and we are going to do this what we are going to do is our ui website or right now we are using postman we have not built this website yet but the postman will call fast api server fast api will do maybe numpy conversion and all those things but for actual prediction it will call a tf serving server which is running on local host 8501 to run tf serving i will start windows powershell because i like to run it that way and i will use this command so i'll explain okay let me if you have seen by the way if you've seen my tf serving video you will get an idea you need to install docker and you need to get a docker image for tf serving that's why if you watch this video code basics tf serving you would get all the understanding on how what to install and you know how different concepts work so now we are running docker run we are saying port 8501 on my host system maps to 8501 on my docker container image and my directory is c code potato disease that is mapping to slash potato disease directory inside my docker container this is the name of the container so i'm running tensor for serving my rest api port is 8501 so if you look at this image see 8501 that's where my tf serving is running and my model config file is potato disease models.config okay so potato disease model.config so here this is how the file looks like i'm saying okay run all the versions which are available so i will run all the versions and when you do uh, prediction by default it will use latest version which is version 3 but you can explicitly specify version as well this way if you you know build a new version 4 it will automatically use that 4 version i'm using a very simple models config file but you can use this kind of fancy file where you know you have different versions for production beta and so on all right so now here i will say endpoint let me let me go into meditation i love meditation okay point end point what is my end point you have any guess see this is how you will use version 2 but i don't really want to use version 2 i want to use latest version so this way it will use latest version basically so if i build a version 4 it will use version 4 if i build a version 5 it will use version 5 so it's dynamically loaded or loading all those things okay all right what did i do okay let me make a you know let me make a new file actually i will keep this so that you have a reference uh this was a model and i will copy with control c control v and i will call it main tf serving dot pi and in here i will make those changes so my endpoint is this of course i'm not using any specific version and now here <laughs> okay so we'll use a request module so i will import request module to make that http call and in this request so instead of model.predict you are using request.post request.post and in that post you are specifying your endpoint you are specifying the in json here you need to specify json data okay what is my json data by the way this is my actual request okay how does my actual request look like if you have seen my tf serving video you know that the way tf serving works is it will expect instances you know as a direct dictionary key and here you need to supply your image batch you can say image batch to list just convert it to a list 
This is the format that it expects basically. And what you get as a result is your response. So let's do just this much. Let's uh, set a breakpoint and once again, test everything from the postman. So I'll set a breakpoint here. I will stop everything. I will do debugging. I'll start debugging here. And once the prompt comes up, when it says local host, this is ready. I go to my postman, send a request. And in the response, say 200. HTTP request 200 response 200 minutes everything is fine and it has predictions here so you need to uh, use I think JSON here okay so predictions looks okay so our request everything work fine so let's further enhance this code and kind of complete it so here the response dot JSON will contain the actual response in that there was an element called predictions in that I want to look at the zeroth image see we are supplying a batch of images but actually we have a batch of only one image so zeroth location is your first image response okay so I will say I will call it prediction not predictions singular because zeroth image okay now here we already saw previously that if you do np.arg max on prediction and np.max on prediction there are two two type of things what do you get well you have already seen this video right here you get the confidence and here you get the predicted class and this is something you return back as a dictionary so predicted class is this one here and confidence is this guy here this is pretty much it i can just run the server now my server is running okay send a request internal server error i think i'm realizing the problem the predictions here i think i need to do this np dot array so i need to convert this into a np dot array otherwise i can't can't call this np arg, arg max function you know so i converted it to that run it again stop and run Just set a breakpoint here. I'm trying to see where exactly that error is occurring. So until this point it is okay. See my response looks good. And here, if I do response.json, let's do that step by step. So response.json. See response.json also looks good. And now let's do not able to edit this so response.json is a dictionary and in that dictionary you are saying prediction so my spelling is most likely okay and zero prediction and you are doing np dot array so i think that should work okay oh so that that worked okay actually okay now np dot arg max let's see if that works okay that works okay Confidence also worked okay. So yes, giving uh, these two back. What happened was, I previously had a session running on 8501 port for my Docker TensorFlow serving. So I'm now running it on 8502. So I change 8502, 8502 here, 8502. And I will just start this and see this is now running. It says this is running okay. And here, I'm just changing my port. 8502. I'm not sure if this is what is the cause for the error, but I'll run it anyway. 
okay that wasn't that wasn't a cause okay oh i'm not supplying a file okay let me just supply the file okay, now i got the same error let me try a different file okay i'm realizing the error here i have to use class name actually because it was a numpy number numpy is not data type is not supported by fast api that's why so this is the you know actual class name so now when i run this hopefully let's see if it works correct see it worked or leave light you can attach an image of a healthy potato plant send it now say healthy so things are working just perfectly okay right now so just to go over it again we send a request here using request module and went to localhost 8502 for tf serving okay and that returned us a response which we are returning back to the ui what we have for today in the next video we will build a website in react.js where you can drag and drop potato plant leaf image and it will call fast APS server that we wrote today uh, for the prediction check video description below i have provided all the useful link including the link of this playlist and i have the by the way same series available in hindi so if you have issues with english you can also watch this series in hindi thank you